Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I want to introduce one of another very popular user interface for stable diffusion, which is called a Comfy UI. So this is the home page of the Comfy UI at uh, GitHub. As you can see, it almost uh, received uh, 12,000 stars. Uh, one unique thing about it is, is the interface. It has a, a like node-based interface. So you are basically able to create uh, some advanced uh, workflow for stable diffusion. And the installation is also very easy. So as I will show you in a minute. So um, it works for both uh, NVIDIA and uh, AMD GPU. I will focus on both. So let's uh, get started. So, so as you would see that you will need to clone the GitHub repo. You copy the URL. So you will need to copy to clone, get a clone the repository to your local computer. You would need to do the get a clone. And then you will change your directory to the clone the repository, config UI. You go into that. After you get a clone your repository to your local computer, and you would need to place your stable diffusion models into the models directory here. There's a first one called a checkpoints. You would put your stable diffusion checkpoints here. So in this case, I have put the stable diffusion SDXL base 1.0 here. So you can also put a stable diffusion 1.5, 1.4, or 2.1 here. So this is also needed to run the application. And after the workflow completes, you would uh, find uh, all the generated image under the output directory here. So these are uh, some of, of my previous uh, generated images. All right. And after that, you would need uh, your Python virtual environment. So if you have been following my previous tutorial, you should have been able to create a, a Python virtual environment using Anaconda. So if you haven't, please uh, uh, check out my previous video, which include uh, installing the ROCM for AMD GPU and uh, the PyTorch. So in this case, I will activate my uh, Python virtual environment. So, and uh, you would need to install the dependency. So the actual dependency of the Comfy UI is quite uh, simple. So we can check out the requirements.txt. So there are only about uh, 12 of them, of them, which includes the PyTorch and the uh, they are not very extensive compared to the automatic 111 web UI. So you would assume it should take much less time to install all of them. So uh, yeah, I will also just do a quickly check. Yeah, so because I already have them, so it took about uh, like five seconds for me. All right, and after that, you are able to start the application. So that's basically everything is uh, under the main.py. So we, are, we can quickly start that. And uh, meanwhile, I will start my monitoring dashboard for my AMD GPU, it's right here. Okay, so we can see that on the console, it uh, 
gives me one URL and I would uh, open that. And uh, this is the default user interface. <coughs> I will quickly go through some of it, but I think it's very intuitive because it uh, has different uh, components. So each component is basically a, a node. So they are connected uh, by the line here. So for example, this is my checkpoint uh, node. So if you have multiple, you were able to select them right here. And it connects to the prompt. For, for example, here is a text encoder prompt. This is the positive command prompt. So this is, uh, I believe this is a negative one. And for this one, this is the sampler. So there are parameters that you can choose. For example, there are steps here. You can import or you can increase or decrease. This is the CFG. You can also increase or decrease. And this is a sampler name. So there's a drop down that you can choose like different uh, uh, sampling method you can use and there's also the noise uh, parameter here and after the sampling it went to the VAE decode here and eventually this is a generated image which can save the image here um, so because we are using the SDXL I will try to Mm. All right, so let's uh, give it a try. So first we ensure that uh, we are loading our SDXL model to make sure it's uh, here, SDXL. And uh, we can use some example prompts. So I also want to, want to mention my Twitter account, I have been posting some of my SDXL image here. So if you want to take a look, yeah, please follow, follow me there if you are interested. And today I want to use one of the example prompts. I think it works very well for Stable Diffusion XL, even though it's intended for middle journey. Right, we input it right here. and uh, add uh, some more details to it. Also, we also want to mention that uh, for SDXL, it is capable to generate a large image. So we increase our dimension for the output, 1024 and uh, 1024. All right, so after that, we can press the Q prompt button, like in the control panel right here, there's a Q prompt. Yeah, let's uh, press that. And in our terminal, we can see that it received the prompt. And uh, here is the GPU monitoring. This is the monitoring for the CPU and the RAM. The first running, it will need to load the model. So it takes uh, some time for the initial generating. Good news is that uh, for the second time generating, it would be very fast, much faster. Okay, after the model loaded, it just started the, the generating. 
And uh, we can see that uh, in our GPU monitoring, it just used uh, lots of, of the VRAM, almost close to 12 gigabytes. But because I'm also using the GPU for rendering, so it should take took additional VRAM away. So that's unfortunately because it's the total is about 12 gigabytes of the VRAM. So in the terminal, we see that it ran out of memory with regular VAE decoding. Fortunately, it retry with tiled VAE decoding. So it was able to generate the image successfully. So as you can see here on the UI, we do see that it looks quite nice. So as you can see here, Yeah, the results looks quite nice. And uh, in our output directory, we can also see that uh, we have one generated image saved, which is called uh, number eight. This is uh, what it looks like. We can see the dimension of it indeed uh, 1024 by 1024 pixels. Yeah, just uh, as I mentioned, uh, the first uh, generating took uh, like extra time to do some like loading model stuff. So let's uh, try another one. We increase uh, the seed by one and uh, click uh, Q prompt. Yeah, as expected, uh, it uh, kicks off immediately. Yeah, we can also see that uh, there's a progress bar on the UI. For example, this is a sampling, which took uh, like which usually takes the most of the time. And after that is the VAE decode. Is there's also a progress bar? Yeah, eventually the image was generated. Wow, it looks really nice, right? All right. So and we see that uh, in our Python console. This time to talk about uh, thirty seven seconds. And then let's generate another one. Yes, usually for the benchmarking, I usually like generate uh, at least uh, three generating after the initial one, and then took the average, so it uh, can be like a very reliably benchmarking. It's right here, yes. We see that uh, it took about uh, 37 seconds, which is close to the second round here. Yeah, let's do another one. Output looks uh, quite amazing, and uh, we also see that uh, it took up almost uh, thirty-seven seconds. I think it works uh, like really well. That concludes today's video. I hope you enjoy it. If you would like, please share the video and the channel to your friends and the social media. My goal is to make AI available to everyone using low-cost 
hardware and uh, designed specifically for AI softwares. Please also donate. I will use all the donation to help uh, people to get uh, access to AI. You can buy Super Thanks right here on YouTube or please use my link to Kofi and uh, Patreon. Thank you very much. Goodbye.